5th, 2022. It's React and Draw. What's up, guys? Oh, man. I'm Dan. He's Sean. It's React and Draw. Two artists trying to make sense of the world while making art. Trying to survive this uh, wacky world we live in. Clown world. <laughs> <laughs> Found the entertainment news of the day. Keeping ourselves entertained. What's up, guys? What's up? What's up, Sean? Oh, I am. I don't know. I think I'm mentally drained today, but it's okay. I'm <laughs> oh, I'm meant to be drained by now. Nice. That's a shot of positivity. You don't want to be like some hyperactive YouTuber, like you know, like uh, give it a shot. You know, hey man, green, hey, like, like <laughs> what's up, YouTubers? <laughs> it's your boy, Sean Stevens. <laughs> Super excited to be here with you. I'm gonna unbox this product right now. <laughs> now I gotta unbox. I gotta find something to unbox. Yeah. What is? What is? You know, if, what you know if these uh, these uh, recession prices keep happening, you're gonna like I don't know, just be unboxing just like regular stuff and <laughs> being marveling and marveling at it. But like, you know, we're gonna uh, hey guys. Guys and gals, we're here. It's another episode of React and Draw. Today we're gonna unbox some oodles and noodles. Some, some <laughs> cheetos. We're gonna unbox this Cheetos. <laughs> exactly. Man, if you had like a boxing unboxing of like Frito Lay products, <laughs> you just like say, Whoa! It's Doritos, whoa. Like we actually got some food today, you know. Yeah, a Pringle. <laughs> <laughs> it's true man hey you don't know what the world's gonna happen man you get rampant inflation you know Nord Stream blew up uh... okay so hold on before we get into anything can you briefly explain this Nord Stream thing to me because I don't even know what that I actually like. can't like, I don't know. oh okay like, maybe I should I'm actually like really... go and like look that up in real time like, I yeah know. I haven't been like well versed in that right now I know it's a pipeline that's responsible for like Gas, oil, things like that. Oh, all right. Hold on. Let me it go. Blew up. Let me go. Educate myself. Educate yourself, so, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Education. You know. Educate yourself, brother. I think the U.S. is accusing Russia. Russia is accusing uh, any oh. one of the NATO people. Oh, uh, this again. Yeah, it's all big figure pointing. It said Nord Stream. I was like, oh, is that the new website? Oh, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Nord Stream, y'all. <laughs> is it like a Nord VPN or something like that? Yes, there is. Yeah, exactly. Is it related? I don't know. <laughs> Russia must be part of the Nord Stream pipeline probe. Oh, they're going to be some kind of investigation right now. Oh, mm -hmm. boy. Boy. Oh, boy. It's Yo, they even got the Loch Ness Monster in here. That's crazy. Bruh. What is going on? This is World War III. Is there, maybe that's why people are going crazy right now. Yeah, it must you be. You know, like how like, people go nuts, you know, like animals and stuff, you know, like the... The woo woo new age people that you know when the moon's in retrograde or something, people go crazy. Right. Maybe the looming threat of like the apocalypse is making people act weirder than usual. You know? <laughs> it's just like blending, you know, just you know, wrecking the circuits of people and how they normally act. You know, like usually people will just have like pre programmed responses to everything. Yeah. But like maybe like the looming threat of like the apocalypse is like scrambling the circuits right now, you know. Like how uh, you know Elizabeth Banks, we were talking about the other uh, live stream, how she was she reversed saying yeah she reversed and said hey maybe like all this like yelling at the fan stuff for not seeing my movie and calling them sexist isn't a good idea isn't a good marketing strategy, and she said the one thing you're not supposed to say in Hollywood like you're not supposed to backtrack on, you know. On on that on the uh, marketing schemes of uh... <laughs> uh, that's I know we touched on this yesterday, but yeah. like, what is really going on? Like, 
Because it's yeah. kind of like that's my theory. Maybe they think like, well, it's all screwed up anyway. Everything's falling apart. I might as well just like speak my piece. Because who cares? Like, well, I know why CW, which we'll get into in a minute. Uh, right. Like CW, like you know, Zazlav, or you know, allegedly, or or like you know, Netflix. Z- with, you know, I know what they're they're starting to you know hint stuff because you know they're losing money, right? But I was just I was kind of shocked about Elizabeth Banks because I'm like, fam, this movie came out like eight thousand years ago. Like, did you just now sit down and realize that she have nothing to do and she was just sitting at home like, yo, you know what? She, she was listening to a bunch of like <laughs> she was reading a bunch of Twitter comments or something. And, right. And, and and seeing actual sales of things. And she was like, <laughs> hmm, maybe this doesn't work. I don't... Yeah, maybe she saw some videos, Anna. She saw some that umbrella guy video or something. I don't know. One day she was just like, How can I pivot? You know what I'm saying? Because I gotta get some... <laughs> How do I pivot to like a more um less adversarial position right now right and it didn't really work i don't know if it worked or not but it's like even the steering towards something gives her like an out and escape route right to be like whatever give me another franchise i promise i won't like you know do that again or whatever but will will we trust her again Oh no, I don't know. I don't think fan trust are just like gone at this point. But maybe with like an original, maybe maybe with an original property or something. Maybe it's like it got so bad they were like, "Oh, she directed the Charles Angels thing. How much did they make? Oh no, I know I'm gonna let her direct a a, a a non, you know, intellectual property that we own. Like we're just even if she has an original screenplay or something, we're not gonna. So let she'll her have like, to. Maybe. Excuse me, sorry. You have to start from scratch, from ground up. Yeah. And it is kind of interesting because it's like embedded in that statement. It was sort of like she was basically saying they set her up to fail. I felt like there was kind of this allusions to that, like, but you know, wasn't I just I'm confused because did she not? She took part in it. Yeah, you know, it's sort of like riding the wave because I don't think I don't know if anyone's like pressuring her to do anything. Like, but maybe they do pressure them and they're afraid to even say that. Like, I have no idea if it's a top down thing, like make this a straight up activist film or it's like they're all have the same ideology, the same ideas, the same tactics. And they just kind of, you know, just naturally move in the same direction like you know like how birds just like flock together mm-hmm. birds of a feather flock together you know they don't have to be like told to flock together right you know, there's no bird chirping behind to say you're lagging behind they just kind of just naturally flow <laughs> who knows either way it's like you know can't go back and change it it's similar with like terminator dark fate you know the greatest terminator film of all time yeah mm-hmm. And he had the admission by the director, Tim Miller. And it was like a similar kind of admission, but even less uh, apologetic than Elizabeth Banks. He was like, well, yeah, people perceived it as a woke film. And I guess that's not what people want right now. And that was it. Hmm. He, so he, he didn't say, like, I made it this way on purpose or something. Or, or this film is well, he just said, like, if they perceived it as so, then that's not what they want. And I have to accept that. Like, I don't even know what that means, but it's sort of like that's the best you're gonna get out of Hollywood. The thing is, it's like the Terminator is a female-led franchise. The movies mm-hmm. that you know, the films that starred uh women, which is the first two, objectively did better than Part three and four. Yeah. But somehow they still... I don't know. I don't know what they're thinking. I, there's no more Terminators, right? Like, there's no... We're done with Terminator. No, right? no, no plans. Yeah. I hope there's no plan for... for nah, I don't think so. For the love like of all that. that is good, just let Terminator... Just leave it alone, man. It needs to go. I mean, the continuity and the quality of the films have declined so much that it's just time to end the franchise. Yeah. You know, they'll eventually try to reboot it or whatever. 
just gonna, you know. I mean, it was innovative back then when there wasn't like countless ripoffs and spinoffs and. I'm not sure what the approach could have been with the Terminator. You know what I mean? Like, what could they have done differently with the Terminator? Um, I mean, I guess they could I, have had it more of like a cerebral film. Not, not, not really like that, but like parts of it be more. Mm-hmm. Like maybe the robots are infiltrating the government or something, or maybe like the robots are gonna take instead of like a killing position, like they just like you know pop out and start shooting people. Until maybe they like go undercover and you know try to set off a bomb or something like that, you know. Right. Now they had the TV show, the Sarah Connor Chronicles. That Sarah was good. Connor Chronicles, yeah. And they were trying to move in that direction too, where like the Terminators were smarter than you know their counterparts in the movies. So maybe it could have did that. It said, I don't know. I guess they were trying to out action the last ones and stuff. I think they should have went another way. I think they should have got like maybe Charlie Brooker, the guy who does um, Black Mirror, and just let him do whatever Terminator thing he wanted. You know, you don't have to use like Sarah Connor necessarily or anything like that. Just like kind of. No, that would make sense. Deal something. Someone who knows how to write a twist and like really scare you in the mind, but then also have an action scene that was like pretty cool. Like he had, a, I remember saw a Black Mirror episode where like this woman was running from like this um this AI uh, drone, you know, slash like critter running around, and it was pretty thrilling. You know, it was in black and white, and it was pretty good. Um, they could have did that, and, like go back I to saw roots. that one. I don't think I did though. Oh. But anyway, um, oh, it sounds interesting. I kind of want to check it out now that you mentioned it. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's pretty dark. I mean all these episodes make you. Let's just get into it. So, we go. first story. What do you want to do first? Oh, you got this. Uh, yeah, I already got this going on right now. All right. So, you got the CW CEO, Mark Pedowitz, sends. What's this? Oh, hold on. I got to make my screen bigger mm-hmm. in order to read. Reading is fundamental. Mark Pedowitz sends rousing letter to colleagues at the CW, celebrates network's wokeness, and he steps down as chairman and CEO. Good Lord. Oh, man. I guess this is abounding into comics uh, headline here. <laughs> right. It's the keywords right here, you know, to make the people click. It says, now that it's found a buyer, Chairman and CEO Mark Pedowitz is out as the head of CW after 11 years with the network and two years in his post. All right. He was there for 11 years. So that means he Maybe. started in 2011? Yeah, there's no. about. Really? Oh. It's not as long as I thought. But then again, how long was that network there for? The network was longer in there longer. So I guess there was a chairman before him hmm. or CEO before him. I remember the CW being a network that was around, mm, I want to say 2005, 2006. Like I remember like Buffy and Angel were like the biggest shows on that network mm-hmm. and Dawson's Creek and when it was a WB and then Smallville was still there. I think I think Smallville might have been the last like genre show to be on that network. A uh, Supernatural, actually. Right. I think. And then when they crossed over, they just kept Smallville and Supernatural, and they canceled the uh, the rest. But Angel, I think, was canceled the year before that. And what happened was they canceled all like most of their sci-fi shows and expensive shows, mm-hmm. and they just want to focus on like I don't know drama and soap opery kind of things you know like one tree hill and make more shows like that mm-hmm. and even though angel was getting ratings it didn't matter because like they didn't own the show so if they don't own the show then they don't get all the money or something like that so they rather just and the and the rising cost of like the actors are just like ah, eh, we don't make that much money off of it so so let's make something completely new and hope we can make money off of that 
and they just made a bunch of flops. So they got no ratings. And so then they just ended the, the WB. It was a wrap. Kept the two shows that, you know, they kept Supernatural and they kept uh, Smallville. Right. And now the, then they made other stuff. And then I guess. And from the other articles I've been reading about this story, I guess they're saying that Mark Pedowitz, he is the architect, not even the architect, but he's like, I don't know. I guess he's he allowed Greg Berlanti is the architect of the Arrowverse. Pedowitz allowed it to happen. So, you know, he always gets. You know, they get the credit, you know. It's like CT's here. We have some people in the chat. CT says you guys should have bought the CW. Yeah. We could have. Um, if you wanted to assume a hundred million dollars in debt. Yeah. I already could have bought it from zero. I have enough yeah, debt, you know what I'm saying, bro? Like I don't yeah, yeah. <laughs> just add it on, you know what I'm saying? Power add on. on add on more debt right now. Like exactly. They don't notice, right? Just just stuff it on there. Anyway, Deadline announced Pedowitz has left following the takeover by the growing entity of Nexstar Broadcasting. His exit will be effective immediately, says the report, and marks the end of the Arrowverse and the CW as we know it. Effective Dang. immediately, they said. As goodbye. we know it. Goodbye. It's a wrap. Uh, he also wrote a goodbye memo to both friends and colleagues, writing, All journeys have a beginning and an end. My wonderful journey of 11 plus years at the CW is now concluded. From the beginning of my time here at the CW, all of you welcomed me with open arms. The camaraderie, <laughs> the camaraderie, teamwork, collaboration, and creativity. Man, he's, he loves an alliteration, this guy. Mm -hmm. Made this a truly special place to work. He continued, together, we have accomplished so much. This upstart network with this unique blend of programming brought the CW into the forefront of pop culture and social media. Wow, he's... A bold statement. Like, okay. <laughs> the forefront will. Um, I will say that I guess he did. I don't know. For better or for worse, this network is certainly doing what the what Disney Plus is doing now. Just a bunch of superhero content, like on there, of questionable quality, but. Certainly hitting the demo that they want. It's not certainly the demo that they get. Right. Because um the company that bought CW Next Star, they actually did like you know market research, which I guess the CW never did. <laughs> 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 and they found out the average uh viewer of the CW is like over 50 years old. Meanwhile, all their shows are targeted to like Teenagers, teenagers, <laughs> with no purchasing power so, so in, 50, in America. 50, they were gonna have fifty years old watching uh, freaking Gotham Knights, and uh, yeah, I guess so. Like the live viewership is like people over fifty, which is interesting. I don't know why. Maybe because they're the only ones who just watch TV in a traditional way. Anyway. We made water cooler TV in a multi-platform world. We embraced what the audience wanted and gave it to them. Those two phrases are key, by the way, because he's saying a multi-platform world. They're firing him. <laughs> well, he's stepping down, right? You know, whatever. I'm sorry. Right. You know, I'm going to send the army of lawyers at me or something. He's stepping down, right? But the reason why the network is failing is because they're saying the live viewership is sustaining the ratings in order to get advertisers to buy in. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So he's saying multi-platform world to try to say like, people are watching this on Netflix when the seasons are over. People are watching this on the website. People are watching this on DVR. You know, I don't know. People are, are bootlegging it on, I don't know. <laughs> On uh, the Pirate Bay or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Like <laughs> People are watching. They told me people. They were saying people weren't watching. But it's a lie. It's a, a New World Order lie or something. I don't know. Whatever. It's, it's a falsification. <laughs> it's a falsification. <laughs> the evidence has been falsified. Like, just read. <laughs> hey, Brina. Brina's here. I saw her. I just seen her right now. 
All right, we got some people in the chat. Brina says, I was taking a call. Man, I've been sad all day. Kim Jong-ji is really gone. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah. And it's just crazy. I didn't even know until Sean told me, like, right now. No, like, right, like, what, really, like, 20 minutes ago or something? Yeah. Well, the news, yeah. I think the news, uh, get the last bit of news was, like, three hours ago. It was, like, the official story according to Google. But, yeah, he passed away. Yeah, yeah, Kim Jong Ji, uh, famed Korean artist, man on the rise, man. He was doing he did some covers for you said Marvel and stuff like that. He did yeah. some, right? And, but uh, um, he's mainly known on the internet. You know, his he, he would draw like perfectly out of his mind, like entire murals just with a sharpie. Oh, so or whatever he had. Artists on the planet, in my it's opinion, pretty... <laughs> it's like... Yeah. It's like his brain was like an HP printer. And someone just like sent him the data through Wi Fi, and then yes. he would just like, you know, draw perfectly, like anything, like draw a car out of his head, a spaceship, a cow, like, you know, <laughs> people in a stadium and draw all the people in the stadium perfectly, like, <laughs> just the people in the crowd watching football like you know yeah <laughs> with a jumbotron playing something else with other people watching football like whatever like and he passed away um we'll get into that in a minute yeah so as many attempted to emulate the cw but few succeeded <laughs> like i i, I guess like, did you succeed so, so hold on stop who was attempted to emulate the cw um I, well, let's sci-fi right, channel. Hold on, hold on. Let me not immediately dismiss the statement. Let me think about it. Let me think about it. Um, <laughs> it's possible he could be talking about HBO Max. Why, like taking DC titles and stuff? Like... Uh, maybe T- taping show ideas or. Like <laughs> Um. Yeah, HBO Max. You know they did dead. They put on superhero entertainment of their own, right? Remember they put on yeah. um, Doom Patrol and Titans. Yeah. Remember? Yeah, I remember. With and Robin uh, screaming "F Batman" and all this, and right. And then they of course ha- they own the same. It's, it's part of the same WB network, so I guess it's right. kind of like the same thing. Disney Plus, but they are they're on they're still on right now, so that means that they're at least succeeding better than the CW. Was the CW successful at being themselves? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. What, when Marvel tried to have, what, ABC used to have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Inhumans? Maybe they talk about them, that they failed? Or something? Maybe. I'm not exactly sure. But they failed because they were like, they were $100 million in debt. They were running it at a loss every year. So what's up? I don't know. No matter they Twitter. dare they dare to defy. That's all you need to know. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they defied. They defied uh, economics. <laughs> they defied the laws of supply and demand. <laughs> <laughs> collectively, you know, collective, you know, more. Uh, they dare to defy them, them, them ratings. Right, it's the conventional norms, yeah, like the Nielsen's, the uh, advertising revenue, uh, <laughs> actual live viewership, their own demographic. They thought like they were advertising to like I don't know hip hip millennials listening to like I don't know Lizzo and like I don't know uh, BTS. And in reality, they should have been marketing to like you know people watching Matlock. Yeah, you know, drinking Ovaltine. <laughs> Watching Johnny Carson reruns on cozy nah, t- on, you know, TV is or whatever that was. An official, officially on decade on decades channel. You know, they should have been watching decades, <laughs> decades cozy. And what was the other one? Um, uh, Pax TV. <laughs> right. <laughs> question. That's what they're gonna do, and I think that's what they're gonna move into. The new the new owners are going to have. Shows that fit the demographics, so you're gonna see like, I don't know, um, 
old detective guy. Will there be any younger people to complain about this? I don't think enough. Like maybe on Twitter or something, a Twitter firestorm. But then, I don't know, maybe they won't listen to them because the CW was following Twitter and they found out that their audience wasn't watching it. Oh, yeah. Everyone follows Twitter and uh, gets into all kinds of... When Elon Musk gets a hold of Twitter, I definitely got to see how many of those people were bots. When he looks under the hood there, they're probably deleting stuff right now. Just hitting delete, delete, delete on like oh, all yeah. the evidence. Anyway, the converted weak weaknesses into strengths and forged new paths that no one had done before in the industry. The CW has become a recognized leader on screen and behind the scenes with our efforts to showcase and embrace the diverse world we inhabit. He wrote further, we envision an environment for people to express themselves without fear and create a stability in an unstable business. We found ways to share our differences of opinion and arrive at a unified consensus. I don't know what that means exactly. Like, you know, I'm not sure what this means. Like, what differences of opinion and what consensus did we reach? And at the network in society like i'm not really sure what the statement means exactly like mm, you got me on that one they expressed themselves and they found a way to make it happen i don't know by what I don't know, cooking the books or something <laughs> like what they found a way to <laughs> just ignore the fact that you're not re- generating revenue i guess when ruby rose was complaining they kicked her off the show well, they were doing their best to fail upwards you know yeah and they made that happen for people, you know. They they they're expressing themselves, which is like whatever. But I wonder if they. Uh, what about the people they didn't let express themselves? What if there was a person that actually pitched them a show that would like actually generate revenue? Like, let's have a show that people like above like thirty years old on this network. How about that? And they said no, no. Right. I don't think so. That's not the audience we want. Meanwhile, that's the audience that's watching. In closing, Pedro has revealed his next move. I will end my CW as I end my CW journey. I will commence a new one. Whoa! I have activated my production consulting company, Pine Street Entertainment. I look forward to bringing some of my projects to the CW. What? <laughs> Wait. So my man left the CW. What? Wait a minute. So he left, and then he's like coming right back left, in, like the revolving door. He left the CWS CEO, so he be, could become a a creator to bring shows to the CW. What? He just like walked back in the door, like <laughs> <laughs> my man. Said, did this. It's like the Grandpa Simpson meme from The Simpsons. Like he just walked into the door, then he walked back out, and now he's gonna walk back in. <laughs> Why? Uh, okay, Mark. Hi, Mark. But is he gonna is he going to incorporate the new data now? Like fifty year what what appeals to fifty year old viewers though? Cop shows. It gotta be cop shows. Yeah. All cop shows. Like NCIS, uh CSI, um Blue Bloods, uh doctor shows, you know. Where they claim they're gonna save your life instead of like, I don't know. Making you wait out there for three hours if you don't got the right insurance, like, you know. That that's the shows that they go to put on, probably. Yeah, you know. shows about the prairie, you know, life on the prairie, things like that. More layoffs are also expected as the merging, churning, and downsizing of media conglomerates affiliated with Warner Brothers in some way rolls on like a train tonight. Yeah, they're still yeah. trying to figure themselves out. My bad, I skipped a whole chunk of this. I just wanted to see what they were going to say at the end, but yeah. He concluded, may the network's journey conclu- continue to be one of unparalleled success and may all of you become, di- may all of you continue to dare to defy the naysayers. Pedowitz, a fan of Supernatural, rebuilt the brand around the popular horror drama and then greenlit many of the network's DC and Hourverse offerings once he rose to the ranks. Many were hit or miss, especially in the last few years when they pushed the flops of that woman and Naomi, which he didn't bother mentioning. Yeah, it did have early success. I think Arrow was a hit, mm-hmm. and Flash, and Supernatural. And then after that, it was like a dubious 
quality. I think like Supergirl did okay like the first year. They had it. it. Originally was a CBS show and it got canceled. Then they moved over to the CW. I didn't know that actually. Yeah. And then uh, they just kept it on. I guess hoping for a viewership. Hmm. But, you know, they never came. Then Batwoman, you know, that was they just left it on. Now they still have shows coming out though. Gotham Knights, right? Yeah, I mean, are they still going to do that? I'd advise against it, but I don't know. I, mean, I remember the star. It was a guy who played Castiel. I think he had a statement about this saying, like, oh, yeah, Mark was a great guy. He allowed us to be on the air. He allowed us to also be in other shows after Supernatural. So I'm guessing he, like, greenlit, like, I don't know, Gotham Knights or whatever and gave him a gig. Hmm. But it's pretty much a wrap. I mean, that 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 trailer was probably the worst one universally. That was fr- that had to be the worst trailer I've. S- that might have been the worst trailer I've seen all year. All year, well, the year is still young. <laughs> but I mean, up until oh, up until now. No, hmm, yeah, it's the worst no, trailer I've seen. I've seen some dude this year. Like this it. year, this is the worst trailer I've seen this year. It's pretty bad. It's up there. I don't know. I, I Well, okay. Let me not go on record with that because, I don't know. I, I forget how many trailers I've seen this year. But, yeah, I don't know. That 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 was pretty bad. All right. It says once uh, he succeeded, there's a chance next star will turn. Hmm. Will turn CW into something more akin to basic cable and localized outfits, packs, IGN television and my network TV that have much less original programming than they did at one time. Not that they had a lot to begin with. I would say so. Probably. Mm. See, um, I think Sean, he cut the cable cord and he cut like a bunch of stuff off. So he don't know what's going on in like oh, over no. the yeah, air yeah, antenna no television right now. But there are these channels, right? Mm. That if you click up more on the dial on local TV, there's like these other channels you can get. And it's basically like it's just show rerun. So they show a rerun of like whatever, um, Reba or something. Or, Oops. Oh man. You know, the show reruns of, you know, Touch by an Angel and things like that. And then right. maybe at night, their primetime offering will be some show that's already made in Canada. So they're just airing a show that's already made from Canada that's and they're usually like some cop show or some crime show, some light entertainment, you know? Right. Like a man and a woman who are like partners and will they, won't they get together, those kind of shows, you know? Like rip offs of bones, rip offs of house and things like that. Oh, that's and that's so probably slotted right with the demographics. So, right. Anyway, so that's that story. Um, I don't really know what to say. I guess it's just that. It was it was coming and it's finally over. Reality hit. The end. Uh, the end of an era. Yeah. So next door we have is Daredevil. Hold on, Joe Blow. Joe Blow. Why? 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 Why are you doing this to me, bro? <laughs> like, you indulge in Planet Hollywood. You don't want to indulge. No, I do not Man, want Planet to. Hol- I didn't know Planet Hollywood was still around. Bro, JVP no Hollywood, there. remember that? Said, what up, gentlemen? Hey, what's up? What's up? What up, JVP? How you been? We're just looking up uh, the news here. So we got Daredevil. So yeah, this is a Daredevil's um making a appearance in Disney Plus right now. And Sean has been watching She Hulk. He saw She Hulk. Uh, he subjected okay. himself to torture. Yes, and he was not a fan. Nope. But other people were subjecting, subjecting themselves to this torture as well, hoping to get a glimpse of Daredevil because they've been teasing it for weeks. And it looks like he finally appeared and they posted the clip on the internet to whet their appetite and probably bring people who have noped out of the show to right. return. Now, hold on. I got to remember. I got to use the other. Give me a second. I will correct this. Mm. 
Hey, it's Chucky. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chucky. Want to play? I think that's getting a season two. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I think that's what they were talking about here. Hold on, let me just shrink this bad boy in a little bit. Brina says, you know, I was listening to this article. What's it say? Can you read that for me? So I was listening to this the whole time, and I didn't know you guys were discussing CW's termination. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, they want me to indulge again. I just changed browsers, and I got to indulge again. No. All right, now I can see the clip. So I did not see this clip. JVP says, having a good week. Just wrapped up the music for Ruthless on to setting up the video and sound effects. Sean better win that Riververse contest. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, man. Thank you. I, well, I, you I submitted it under the wire, right? You, did you submit it? Is it officially mailed it's in? It's submitted. Um, I, I have to go and see if it's, because, uh, you know, it's going to take them a little bit to, like, update the site i'm gonna go check yeah. right now as a matter of fact you know. it's funny because they would say they had a section that said artist name and art name and artist name and i was like do i put art attack and then sean stevens but i just put like sean stevens for both because i don't know I yeah you know, that's your name so it's like you know of course we're rooting for our boy you know sean stevens you know i'm sure there's many talented people in the contest but you know we gotta root for a boy like Mr. Stevens, yeah. I tell you what, I could use in a thousand, you know, thousand opposition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's not. It's, um, hold on, let me scroll. It's tough because it's like you gotta let people marry. Oh with no, I'm right here. I'm here. Oh, oh. I'm here. I, I guess I could bring it up. Uh, let me uh, let, let's let's go to the videotape, y'all. Yeah. Rip a verse. Rip There we go. Go here. I think uh, yes. Fan art section. When does the contest winner win? I'm not sure actually, but I know like the um. I know I know it ends on the seventh, which is what probably Friday. Brina says, I didn't want to enter the contest because I didn't know if I'd like the story or not. Also, I've just been busy. Yeah, trust me, I, I'm busy too. I probably had no business doing this doing this art piece like whatsoever, but I just try to crank it out the best I can. Uh, look at they had a lot of entries, right? Yeah, they did. They definitely did. Hold on. This has like I was saying before last night, it's like I don't really see a lot of these other comic book companies having fan art contests anymore you know it seems like a no-brainer right you know it's a fan engagement but they don't don't know why but they don't ah. do we miss yours or is it down the bottom no, it's, 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 it should be down here should be down here that's cool yo look it's our buddy uh huggy <laughs> Hage, like y'all don't know uh Hage Higgy man, but he's uh he's one of our Twitch uh well actually no CT no no wait what I'm talking about everybody here on chat knows who Hage is. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. Mm -hmm. Now you know very cool. Pretty cool. All right, let's go down. Scroll, scroll, scroll in. This is assuming that he's bulletproof. I kinda like the assumption here. Right, here, right. We assume that he's bulletproof. See, we see we didn't know. Like Sean didn't know. Like yeah, I had no idea. Like I, I'm like and we didn't, I'm lost. Yeah. I don't have my book yet because I was one of the last two orders. So I'm, you know, I'm gonna be la one of the last to <laughs> receive. Oh, there I go. I'm second to last. Uh, here is me, y'all. Y'all didn't see. I only have this posted on Twitter at the moment. Right. It's looking very uh, crisp. Looking very clear right now. <laughs> very nice. You got smoke happening. Thank you got you, her charging you. up with the intense blue light. You got like a sunny horizon, like a 
dawn you know like one of those top gun style uh right cloud <laughs> formations uh, on sunsets you know you got the alpha core man in the back looking hard he's not playing you know? this is lit this is like some joe mad stuff bro this is like this oh, is what's, hot whoa, whoa, what's that right now okay but yeah well, the, yeah, so I, hopefully, it, I, uh, Sean will. Uh, I don't know. Is this like? Is this like? I guess it's like they'll pick the winner and then that's it. Yeah, or three or something. They're gonna just pick give like me three. Third place. I was, <laughs> <laughs> nah, shoot for the gold, bro. Keep going for the gold. The oh, look, some guy did a GIF. What's that? Someone's moving Alpha Core. Like he did a GIF. Yeah. I don't you can submit a GIF. That's interesting. Well, all right. So yeah. there you um, have it. So. All right, now back to uh, well, you know what? Let's just jump in. Let me let me let me just see the clip because we're not yeah, gonna do, do a long stream today. Thing for this, or yeah, it's not a long stream. We're gonna just jump right into the what what were you clip. saying? So this is so do you have to like pause this or some shit like how the YouTube probably, do, but you know? I um probably not. You can even. pause it and we'll just like it'll pause it, but I'm probably not even gonna keep this to be honest. So um, let's see. Oh, cool. Put your pause in there. <laughs> oh! Is she? Oh, is she in like classic like tree? Oh, look, is she got. Ah, they put her in like her. Uh, this is more like her outfit from the comics, right? Yeah, a little bit. Like she has like short shorts, it's like just sneakers. The only time I'll enjoy her look right now. <laughs> Add out of here. You need to back off. And waste this outfit? Eugene, get out of here! No super suit! <gasps> You're making a mistake. You made a mistake when you messed with my client. Did they give him the they gave him the red and the yellow? Yes, they did. I don't know when he got that. Uh we I guess between season two and now. <laughs> I guess. No, wait, was season two the last thing he did, or was the Defenders the last thing he was in? Chronologically. The last season, I think, is the last time. Season three. Before I play the rest of the clip, this is kind of upsetting. The Not what? the way... No, because it's like, I like Daredevil. Like, I love the Daredevil series. Oh, yeah, know? it was great. So, I'm like, to put him and mix him with this mess, I'm just like, I don't want to see him here. Like I don't want <laughs> I don't want him here. I don't like I heard that they were doing like a reinvention or something where they're keeping him in Kingpin and dumping Foggy and uh, Karen Page and not even acknowledging the Netflix version at all and they're gonna Bruh. just have him be a whole retconned character. Why? I, I don't know. That's 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 what I heard. Like, There's literally really no know. point like the Okay. I could be wrong about that, and they're just that's what that's what some people are saying because there's some comments saying, "Oh, we're doing a whole uh, reinvention or something about with him," and so then people were saying, "Oh, I guess they're not going to acknowledge Netflix and just like having him debut right now, and they'll explain his new origin, his official MCU canon origin or something," which makes no sense. I I don't even know what that means. They were already in the MCU, but Daredevil is on. Disney Plus, though, right? Is yes. It? Oh, okay. So then maybe the, maybe they're not doing that. Right. That's, yeah. Because it's like, even if, like, you know, you watch, like, Luke Cage and it'd be like, oh, do you think, you know, with the kid passing by, oh, you think you could beat that green guy? You know, like, they were already in the MCU. So I don't even understand why they would need to retcon. Oh, okay. All right. If they do, that's pretty pretty silly, I would say. Hold on, CT Meyer says so. The thousand dollar commission is for fan art submission, or you got to make a new drawing. I think it's a new drawing. I'm not sure. Vel says the red and yellow costume only works in comics and animation. Yeah, hold, hold on. Let's see. Let's see, let's the, see. Adventures, let's keep the adventures of broccoli versus ketchup and mustard. Let's go. Because now I'm going to whoop your ass. <laughs> <laughs> My uh, ass remains unwhooped. Yeah, let's fix that. Ah! 
Wait, I gotta add in the middle. Oh, that was it. That was it. Oh. Well, his ass remains unwhooped. So. That was probably the funniest line in the whole series. So I still didn't laugh. But, um. Well, he was there. He jumped. He did their little thing. It's cool. He tried to, like, glide down that building with the. Right. I do not want him here. I don't want him in the middle of this <laughs> crap. Like, leave Daredevil. Uh, and we What is this? After several teasers, it seems that Daredevil is finally ready to make his debut on She Hulk Attorney at Law. A new clip from Thursday's episode of the Marvel series has been released. And the man without fear is front and center as he faces off against She-Hulk for the first time. I mean, how can he actually face off against She-Hulk? You know, whatever. Uh, they just described the scene that we already saw. Yeah. Oh, there's two episodes left to go. Yes, and then he's going to run into his own series. I don't know why Disney feels that they or people are saying, "Oh, this must be has to be Brady Peaches or Teen" because it's on Disney. And I'm like, Disney still cares about families? Like, <laughs> what? Like, really? I like, mean, no. this is still like a a wholesome uh, entertainment company at this point, right? Like after uh, the Rescue Rangers trailer, with, with, like turning red, and like, do we still like think this is like a family? Like, you know, are they re- at least they're redefining what is family entertainment, but still. And I guess it still doesn't include a show with, I don't know, kicking and punching and things you could watch like on network television. Like, right. I guess it doesn't still include that. And now it doesn't include that. It's like you already have a parental controls. Like, how hardcore can they get? Is the limit like Moon Knight? That's it? Yeah, I think so. I think Moon Knight. They're already showing Daredevil, right? And I guess they didn't edit. The violence out of it, right? They're showing the Punisher. Yeah, they're showing the Punisher. So, and I don't even know if the is the violence edited in the Punisher. I don't know. I don't think so. I think that's why they have parental warnings now. So, like you know, like a thing you can turn on to say, "Oh, if you're make sure you're over eighteen years old to watch this." Right. So maybe the fans are just like you know, there's people on Twitter. They're like, "Oh, they're gonna." Disney-fy it, and it's like, well, it's unconfirmed. Y'all, by the way, y'all have to see the Disney Plus section when you click the Marvel section. Yeah. Like, it's all the new people on the top. Really? Like yeah. who? Like Miss Marvel and she Miss Hulk Marvel. And... Uh, not She-Hulk. It's Miss Marvel. Um, Black Widow is there for some reason. Don't know why. Uh, Thor with the short hair. Loki. Shuri, uh, my my man's from uh oh, oh my goodness, how do I, uh, I forget the name of this movie, Ten Rings, dude. Oh, Wong, no, um, Shang Chi. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Wanda's there. Uh, Black Panther's on there for some reason or the other, mm. but with the mask on. Right. Oh, and Sam is in the center with wearing wearing his Captain America outfit. Good luck to these guys, man. Like, oh. Anyway, that was uh, that was interesting. Okay, so let's go uh, get to the last story. We have our man, our yes, buddy Kim Kim just Kim Jong Ji, man. Oh man, no. this, this, I, so I I learned about this on Twitter this morning. And yeah, I, he had a a course that he was gonna teach in New York. Um, and I believe uh, he was also be gonna be at Comic Con, but don't quote me on that. But yeah, uh, forty seven years old and forty seven dies of a heart now, attack. A heart attack. Did he have a history of heart problems? I'm not exactly sure. This renowned illustrator Kim Jong Ji 
died Monday in Paris at age 47 after suffering a heart attack. And Daniel Megan, the Daniel Megan Gallery announced Wednesday. Oh, so he died yeah. Monday. Yeah, like usually it's, uh, it's pretty young. Sheesh, man. So the according to, according the to a statement, oh sorry, sorry go, go ahead. No, you can go ahead. According to a statement shared on Kim's Instagram page, the South Korean artist had just completed his final engagement in Europe and was about to board a plane to New York, where he was scheduled to appear at Comic Con this week. Oh, there you go. After experiencing chest pains at the airport, Kim was taken for surgery to a nearby hospital where he died. After having done so much for us, you can now put down your brushes," wrote his collaborator Hyun Jin Kim. Yikes. Once that happens, it's like a race against time. Like they have to get you in the hospital and they got to put the stint in or else it's a wrap. Like they have to. Right. Um, if, if that's what could save him, cause we don't know. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. It's like, uh, His yes, sudden appearance contrast with the immense happiness he brought us. Read a statement from the Making Gallery in Paris where an exhibition of Kim's work is on display. Oh, I missed skipped a paragraph. It says Kim was known for his exceptional ability to draw intricate illustrations entirely from memory, with no references whatsoever on large canvases with his trusty brush pen. The talented craftsman who also contributed artwork to graphic novels as well as Marvel and DC Comics held the Guinness World Record for longest drawing by an individual. Hmm. And I mean longest by, like, length or, like, longest, like, drawing without rest or something. That's a good I question. I assume, like, long, I guess length, I'm assuming. Probably length, because I know he used to draw on these big panels. We are speechless. Daniel Megan, the entire gallery team, and particularly Olivier Soul, who had accompanied him for 10 years, as terribly affected by his loss. All our thoughts are turned to his family, his wife, his two children, his friends, his collaborators. Kim Jong, Kim Hong Jin, Born Lee, Jean Christophe Coret, and his fans, for whom his disappearance will leave a great void. At the request of Kim's family, his exhibition at the Making Gallery will continue in the artist's memory until Saturday. Born in 1975, the South Korean town of Going Si Kim began sketching at an early age before studying art and design at Dong Hui University in Busan, according to these, his artist bio. After attending college, Kim was required to serve two years in the South Korean army, where he pretended to draw poorly. <laughs> to avoid getting asked to sketch portraits of people's loved ones. <laughs> That's funny, bro. It's a good idea. <laughs> you know. Will you draw me? Will you draw this? And... That's crazy. It's crazy that you have to subvers- you have to be forced to serve like in the army. Yeah, no. That's that's nuts. They want to try to bring that stuff here. Uh, there's always some politician that's trying to always bring that stuff over here, that forced uh servitude. Yeah. Um, they didn't really ask me for too many favors. They didn't really ask me too many favors, Kim said in a 2018 interview with Proko. I didn't even draw my own family, so why should I have to draw someone else's? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, this guy. This guy is... I, I, uh, bam, 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 bam. <laughs> yo, my man is... Uh... He draws what he want to draw. You yep. know what I'm saying? He's mad ass I respect end, this. You know? I respect it, because... I think secretly a lot of artists feel like this. Right. It's like, yo, I'm going to draw this like flower. He want to draw cool things. There was another art student that joined a few months later after me who ended up shouldering a whole lot of this burden. And when he later found out I was actually very good at drawing, he got a little annoyed. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. While serving the army, Kim memorized the structure of various weapons and vehicles, such as military aircraft, and began to draw them in his mind. In his mind, Sean. I don't understand. Of course, it was yeah. Of course, a little scary, but my interests override any fear. 
I would keenly observe the gears and guns and try to touch them and feel them if I could. Early in his artistic career, Kim often drew erotic illustrations with graphic depictions of sex and nudity, for which he was sometimes criticized. Some were so explicit he could not include them in his official sketchbooks, which sold for more than $100 a piece. Whoa. Mm. Spicy. I've been told that my drawings are misogynistic, and I've had people ask me why I draw genitalia. Well, I draw them because they're there. <laughs> <laughs> I still have a lot of naughty thoughts inside of me. I just have more people around me that keep me under control. They tell me to stop drawing stuff like that. I used to draw whatever I wanted back when I wasn't famous, but since now I have a reputation to keep, I have limitations. This makes me a little sad. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to continue to draw the smut, you know, yeah. but the man wouldn't let him, you know, he's, he's trapped within the confines of his own fame. It's a lot of pressure, you know. Over the years, Kim's sprawling imaginative drawings have depicted all kinds of things, people, lions, tigers, mythical creatures, superhero cityscapes, battles, and beyond. In addition to selling his sketch collections, collaborating with comic book publishers, teaching online art courses, and displaying his work at galleries and events, Kim also entertained the masses in real time during his live drawing sessions. While sketching elaborate portraits before an audience, sometimes over the course of several hours, the cartoonist would crack jokes and offer insight into our, his artistic process. Once his performances attracted a significant following, he held live drawing sessions in France, United States, and all over Asia. Hmm. World tour. This is a man like whose like, artistic ability was like, he's, it was like naturally came to him, so like he could basically do anything, I guess. Like, right. This drawing thing wasn't the hard part. It was just like all the traveling and the, you know. But that's pretty sweet, you know. On Wednesday, DC Comics publisher Jim Lee hailed Kim via Twitter as one of the absolute greats. Marvel Comics editor C.B. Sabolsky said he was still sitting here stunned after learning of the artist's death. Kim was truly a phenomenal talent whose pen and oh brush God. wizardry captivated and inspired millions of fans around the world, Lee tweeted. While he drew some incredible comics, it was his live drawing and sketchbooks about his life. Travels and dreams which spoke to me the most. It was downright eerie and spellbinding to see someone with an ear photographic memory bring an illustration to life with the style and flair that only Zhang Ji could deliver. There was no one quite like him. Sabolsky Wright rest, wrote and rest in peace. Okay. Well, this is a long article. No, I think that's it. I mean, we don't have to read the whole thing, but yeah. Right. So it says, as of this year, Kim had published six sketchbooks that amount to approximately 4,500 pages worth of drawing spanning more than a decade. He also illustrated the Sung Jun Park comic book series Tiger the Long Tail as well as the Bernard Wabner, Webner novels, The Paradise and Third Humanity. Hmm. I'm not even thinking about what I'm drawing most of the time. If I can't think of anything to draw, I just draw a person first and keep adding to it. I still find drawing fun, and I hope that I won't lose a sense of joy for a long time. Wow. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah, it's a bummer, man. It's a depressing. That's we out here losing Julio. <laughs> we losing Kim Jong Cheapest. What's going on, man? Andrew Flesher from Depeche Mode, Bob Saget. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, that this is all twenty twenty two strikes. Exactly, heart attacks. You know, you know, there's a big wake up call to keep my health in check because you know, yeah. But what's going on, man? <clears throat> Just dropping Stress, these people with money too, man. These people yeah, with money. I know. You know, I know. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm surprised also. I'm, I mean, I'm not I'm sure still what walking. the diets are of these people, but you know, I'm sure they're not eating like biscuit, like <laughs> no. eating good. I'm eating bi actually no, I don't have biscuit. I have a hungry jack. Uh, yeah, there you go. Pancakes. There you go. I don't. I definitely should not have that in my house. Uh, Sam Rogers here. Hello, everyone listening to you while playing Mario Market. Hey, Sam, what's up? What's up? What's up? We're not doing a super long stream today because you know, on account of me. Uh, I was the before we even like head up out of here. I was thinking, um, Dan, do you uh tomorrow maybe we could do half and half and try to figure out the comment thing we were talking about? 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to like do a thing where we put uh, the comments on the screen. Yes. So you know, and we're working in a, uh, you know, we're not using Streamyard, so we gotta yeah. figure out an alternate way. But we already know how. We just gotta go live in order to do it. Right. So definitely, yeah. So we can go on Twitch, um, and then come here, and then you know, we'll take a new topics and stuff. Right. And do like a stream. So this is what we'll do. Well, uh, I I don't know. It also depends when I get home because schedule's crazy. But we're gonna say around. It's gonna be late, I guess. We're gonna say safely around nine nine thirty nine o'clock. We'll jump on Twitch for like an hour. We'll do our showcase, and then around ten o'clock we'll come here. Yeah. Uh, um. I'll just make a generalized, um, I'll just make a generalized, uh, you know, thumbnail because it's not going to be, it's going to be a just chatting for the moment. But, uh, yeah, um, if y'all around 10 o'clock, uh, for, you know, you people who are on YouTube, feel free to come in, test out our, test out our new, uh, our new comment, uh, option. And then after yeah. that, of course, we'll be back Monday. Mon well, we'll be back on Twitch Monday. We'll be back here on Tuesday. So tomorrow for about an hour, and then we'll be back, you know, on Tuesday. But yeah, that's uh man, what a what a day. Yeah, a lot of news, man. So in conclusion, we got uh the CW stepping down. They're gonna probably have to get some old celebs to star in shows, you know. Like hmm. John Nelson, he's 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 approaching like sixty something years old. Maybe he wants to come and do a show. At the revamp CW, you know? right? Oh, by the way, to the earlier question that we had about like the Punisher, what while we were yeah. uh, talking, I just uh, clicked on to the last episode of season one, and yeah, like it's it's definitely all intact. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, it's, so. it's 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 all rate it's rated all. <laughs> Very on, good on Disney Plus. So shocked yep so we got daredevil she hulk so you know i expect him to be comedic in that one because it's a comedy show yeah yeah so the real question is how he's going to be on his own show right and that's uh we'll find out what's going on with and that, that comes out and tomorrow that episode comes out tomorrow right so matter of fact matter of fact matter of fact maybe 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 okay if i can <laughs> if i can watch this episode that which will be episode eight, Lord. See, it's funny because I didn't want to watch this stupid show, and then I just got caught up watching it. But now, now that I have got up to episode seven, I feel obligated <laughs> to watch episode eight because my boy Daredevil is in it. So when I get on YouTube, when we get on YouTube tomorrow, I guess I will discuss uh, episode eight, my review of. of of episode, Jesus Christ, of episode eight. <laughs> oh, we have a chat here. It says the view with Drew asked, "Do you guys hate Daredevil?" What's the name? Uh, Daredevil, two thousand three, starring Ben Affleck. Uh, I don't know if I say I hate it. I know I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hate. there's some uh, dubious moments in it, like. I mean, the whole, I don't know, it seemed like kind of like serious at parts, but then it got silly at parts right. as well. Like, I like the casting. Like, I like uh, Jennifer Garner and uh, Ben Affleck is a good choice for be dare play Daredevil. And you had uh, John Favreau was happy. Mm -hmm. No, it's not even happy. What was, was he happy? Was um, like, I'm, 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 I know who you're talking about. Um... No, Happy is uh, the Iron Man guy. Um, oof, I'm getting bad memory. His buddy, Foggy Nelson. Yeah, there you go. I know it ended with an E. <laughs> Something <Right>. E. <laughs> Foggy. You know. But uh, I don't know. Like some of the soundtrack was like. Oh, the soundtrack know, killed it for me completely. I, I don't know. Nick, like if I were to go back background, like... and watch it right now, I'm pretty sure that I can like tear apart the the. Uh, um, I could t probably tear apart the, the the choreography. Like they were fighting, and like remember they were fighting in the playground and stuff, and they were having some like some. With that Power Rangers fight. 
Yeah, they were fighting the seesaw going up and down. Right. That was really funny. Uh, yes, I remember that. Especially back then, because I only saw it like maybe once or twice. Like maybe once when it was in the theater, and then another time when it was on cable or something. And right. I think I wasn't prepared for the tonal shifts back then, because like I don't know. I think people who grew up with the movie they don't mind that stuff, like because they grew up with whatever, like new metal and they grew up with like uh movies Probably. trying to have wire foo and things like that and i was a little older so also it was like during that time like the 2000s <sighs> like the action was falling off in movies yeah like the matrix was like the one that achieved like the wire foo and they look like organic right. like the matrix one and then everything after that was like falling short in a way um, but I don't know. Like, I mean, other than that, Bullseye, Colin Farrell, Bullseye, like the script is is decent. I don't know. Just like some of the tone of it is weird. Like, I don't know if uh, Mark Steven Johnson is up. Should be. I don't know. He has to work on his tone. Right. But um, it certainly is better than uh, Thor Love and Thunder and things like that. Like, I still have so. not seen this thing. I'm not sure it's better than Eternals, but I didn't see Eternals. Oh, God. Eternals is so so bad. What was better, Daredevil 2003 or the Eternals? Like the Eternals, not even a movie. Like <laughs> that's a choice. Like, <laughs> Woo! Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you can't be debating this, are you? Like you got to say to Daredevil 2003. Like I mean, you had action, right? What really? You don't like um, it that much? No, nah, I mean Daredevil. Uh, that music, bro. Like I don't know, Daredevil music. Really, really. What kind? Of, what kind? What, <laughs> what kind of Grammy award winning hits is playing during the Eternals? With I mean, it wasn't. It was stock like, MCU it, score. I just can't. It's like that Michael Bay joint from 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 the Netflix. Like the uh, music, like messes with me like badly. Like, but um, bro, just just on just on the vibe alone. Like I would have to say the Daredevil beat the Eternals because I don't know. Eternals is just like cringe but it was like more stealthy cringe or something i don't know man bro i don't know i saw this i don't all i know is what i saw from the trailer of eternals and the clips it looked like this is unwatchable for me like i can't do now it. i'm trying to figure out if what's worse eternals or thor love and thunder but only i saw eternals and you saw love and thunder so maybe we need to swap movies and then I'm you know what's sad now it's like <laughs> <laughs> Pop music right now has fallen off so bad that I don't mind the music from the 2000s at this point. Like, at this point, I gotta, be, I gotta yeah, watch if, the movie again. Yeah, I'll I gotta say, watch the movie if I, again. If I watch it again, cause, cause, it's not as it has like nostalgia factor now, right? If I watch it again, it's probably not gonna be as annoying. No, <laughs> Shamari Nedrix is <laughs> Sean's a fan. This whole 2003 Dan Love Blade Trinity <laughs> this is slander. <laughs> the slander this is all caps, not true <laughs> lies. I don't think I ever saw Hulk 2003. I saw it. I think I saw clips like on cable, was, but I was like falling in and out. It's boring. It is boring. It is boring. I did see Blade Trinity. I that was on uh, Blade was... Trinity. Ang Lee. I'm pro Wesley Snipes, by the way, in that whole story. Like, I know Pat Oswald, you know, trashes him every time and all this and says, oh, he's crap and right. he sucks. And it's like, well, you know what? That movie sucked. Okay. Like, so. Yeah, Blade Trinity. <laughs> I, I, I don't I, I don't know if I could see he wasn't right on this one. Yeah, no, he definitely would. They they, they tried to the view is yeah. The view is Drew says the song won't back down by fuel was fire. See, I told you people like the soundtrack, you know. Right. Like, thank you. Like if I go back, it's probably but I know that Michael Bay joint on Netflix had really bad music. Like that's <laughs> But the, so the music. I have to Daredevil. watch it again. I'm gonna watch it again because I know some people like it. Like I know like as a like a Razor Fist. He Razor Razor Fist likes Daredevil mm -hmm. director's cut. So I have, maybe I have to watch the director's cut because I think it has more uh, violence and oomph in it. Right. So I'll have to uh, give it another look. Out. See, I give it another look. You know, because I'm living in the era of like Fast and the Furious, where it's like so ridiculous, where. They're driving S, you know, SUVs up, I don't know, cheap bridges that mm -hmm. fall down and it ramps up like defying logic and stuff and right. 
So like maybe the physics of like Daredevil 2003 is on the level of um, Die Hard 1 or something. Actually, just, just on the fact that I'm willing to watch Daredevil again just means it's definitely better than E.T. Eternals. Because I'm not, <laughs> I'm not watching Eternals again. Like, I'm not. I'm shocked that was even a, a contention at all. Like, <laughs> it, it, just on premise alone. Like, I don't care. What, I don't like those actors. I don't like the way their costumes look. I don't know what, what this was about. Like, I, who cares about this? These Daredevil is Daredevil. Yes, you know, you're right. Just on concept alone, like, they, <laughs> The the concept of Daredevil beats any of like these cosmic beings. I don't really give a crap about. Um... Sorry, Brina says you should play Hitman or Hitman Two. Um, that would maybe. be pretty funny. I don't know we got we got that we got we got so uh, just for the you YouTube uh, uh, crowd. Um, like uh Dan and I we started like you know we'll take like one night out of the 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 four day streaming schedule and like stream like game last the game we were playing was uh uh um heavy rain which was pretty entertaining and I'm still mad I lost that clip because what I was going to do is get the uh the gaming footage and and put it on my other my other channel that I'm not really using right now, my art, my other, my art channel, the channel I had before, you know, we made it here on React and Draw. Um, but yeah, for, um, bring it for the next game, Hitman. We'll see because uh, it's either going to be that, or it's going to be Beyond Two Souls, or it's going to be Control. Um, but it's definitely going to be God of War, Ragnarok by November 9th. As long as there's games that we can, you know, make jokes about. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess you can't really joke about God of War, really. I mean, kind of. No. Kind of. Boy. You better still be calling him Boy, too. Like, do not call... His name is not Atreus, bro. His name is Boy. Like, we don't have to clown the game, but, like, just, like, you know, have an adventure element so we can, like, incorporate ourselves into it. Not just, like, a button masher or so. Like, Sean's playing, and I'm just, like... Yeah, like, you know, I can't really... Hanging out, reading... Like no no, no <laughs> yeah like we can't really like do commentary on like Devil May Cry you know what I'm saying like <laughs> <laughs> trying to get levels up. Matt, the the view withdrew. You got to read that. I can't. Um, oh, it says I think my is the Avengers poo -poo teams happen between happen between Wolverine, Spider Man, Daredevil, Ghost Rider, Blade, Punisher, the thing from Fantastic Four. What set of actors do you want? The original actors or the MCU actors. Um, wait. So I guess the question is, oh, what like what new actors would I choose for the Avengers team? I had no idea. I don't actually don't if even. If... Sorry, go read ahead. that again. If an Avengers team happened between Wolverine, Spider Man. Oh, between those characters. Sorry. And the I get theme what from Fantastic Four. What set of actors do I want? Do you want the original actors or the MCU actors? Well, you mean like the old movies or something? I guess you're t talking about like, you know, Spider-Man. Well, I mean, three people play Spider-Man. Uh, Ghost Rider, oh, okay. Nicholas K. Um, Wesley Snipes, uh, The Punisher, Daredevil. I actually don't mind the people that played most of those characters. Like, I don't, yeah. mind, I don't mind Hugh. Uh, for Spider Man, oof. Uh, now hold on. Out of the three of them, mm. I'm, I'm gonna pick between Toby or or Andrew. Interesting. I don't hate Tom. Like I don't. It's just like it's not even him. It's not him. It's it's just the is what the script they gave him to work with. You know, like where he was like Spider Boy and Iron Man was his dad. It was like highly high key annoying. Uh, <laughs> so maybe like either one of the, either one of them would like wouldn't matter. Um, Ghost Rider. Oh, <laughs> Ghost Rider. <laughs> Well, there's only like Nicholas Cage, right? Oh, what yeah. uh, the if Aegis of Shield, they had what that guy uh, Reyes or something had like it made him into. They did a, the other Ghost Rider where he like drives a car or something. And, oh, but I don't know. I, I go with Nicholas Cage. I mean, Nicholas Cage, 
is an interesting actor, you know? And yeah. Ghost Rider doesn't have to be like, you know, he's all CG anyway. Like, he yeah. could do the human parts and, you know, they just didn't, you know, and you got to give him more, more material to work with. And Blade will. I guess if you had new actors, I have to think about new actors. I, I don't know who could play Ghost Rider. I don't know. Oh. Whoever is in shape enough to do it, I guess. Ryan Gosling, I don't know. <laughs> One of those guys. Yeah. Um, Blade. Blade, of course, Wesley Snipes. Right. Wesley Snipes should come back and do it now. Yeah. Is he too old to be doing jump kicks? I don't know. Wesley Stallone is all, you know, that Netflix movie. Yeah, that's true. Samaritan, and he's like pushing 80. So. <laughs> Punisher. I have no problem with uh, my man just playing Punisher. Oh, the new guy? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Burnthal, Bur- Bur- John yeah, Burnthal. Yeah, yeah no he's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, I like him. Um, uh, the Thing from Fantastic Four. Um, I guess uh, Thing should just be CGI. And yeah, it kind of don't matter who playing. You know, who's playing? And I don't know what voice it should be. Hmm. It's just like, oh, he's talking about Thomas Jane. No, nah, I'd probably go. I'd probably go with Burnthal on on the Punisher. Right, I go with Burnthal because he 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 embodied like the, the rage. That, yeah, the the rage and like that the shaky, like you know the the ner- the unnerved like vet, like right, uh, <laughs> like he 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 had that. Uh, JPP said, "I love Ghost Rider. That's the one hero that will." Never get a movie for, he deserves. Yeah, I don't know. They keep they keep front up on the Ghost Rider. I used to love Ghost Rider. And it should so. be easy, you know. Like this is alternate universe somewhere, where instead of Stephen Norrington doing After Blade, he did The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, mm-hmm. and then that flamed out his career. Um, there's probably alternate history where he did Ghost Rider. Instead, <laughs> and that was a big hit, and he casted. I don't know whoever was famous at the time, right? I don't know who could be Ghost Rider back then. Some, some, some actor in shape or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, uh, the view with Drew just remind, yeah. Michael Chiklis uh, did a great job as a thing. I forgot he was the thing. Yeah, Michael Chiklis. Yeah, he says, would you want the cast to be Hugh Jackman, Tom McGuire, Ben Affleck, Nicholas Cage, Wesley Snipes, Thomas Jane, and Michael Chiklis? You know, those guys are all great actors, you know? Anything of those movies, if they made, like, a bum script or a bum sequel, it was because of the the uh, writer and directors, you know? Yeah. Like Michael Chiklis is a great actor. The Shield was one of the best shows of all time. Uh, Thomas Jane's a good actor, too. I mean... I can't really say like you know like I can't put to like one Thomas Jane movie where I was like yo that's that's the movie right there that right but I I just remember his monologue in Boogie Nights you know remember he was just like he's like what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> and he's the one and then he's like I want the money I want the coat I want <laughs> I want it all <laughs> he's just waving the gun around he's trying to get him to leave while the guys you know. Kids throwing firecrackers on the floor. That scene in Boogie Nights was intense. We came here to do something, and we got up. I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then he got shot through this by um Alfred Molina. Um, spoiler alert. JVP says, "Oh no, Viva Drew says whoever they got to play the MCU Wolverine, Tom Holland, Charlie Cox, maybe Ryan Gosling as Ghost Rider, Mahershala Ali, John Berthold, and whoever they get to be the MCU Ben Grimm." Uh, does Blade in the MCU even exist anymore? Because <laughs> man, by the time they get Mahershala Ali to actually be in a Blade movie, he's going to be as old as Wesley Snipes. Like was when they kicked him off of Blade, like right and, and beyond. I don't know. Like the book, you could push. He's pushing fifty, like Mahershala Ali. If you don't notice, yeah, it's getting a little silly. So at this point, they might as well just win with Wesley, even though Wesley's like sixty or something like that. But he studies martial arts, so he's not looking like you know. Just put him on HGH, you know. Yeah, cold day. 
Um, or they could play. Uh, they could get um, my man, uh, Wesker, since he was just uh, oh. he was Blade anyway, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> never. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, from Hasha Ali, I guess. Like, see, the thing is, I like Wesley. People like Wesley. You know what I'm saying? He, he was cool back in. Remember, he was Nino Brown in New Jack City. You can't beat that. He had all the memorable characters. He was the villain yeah. in Demolition Man. Right. He was Simon Phoenix. You know, superstar. <laughs> You know, Brown, he was Blade. He... <laughs> I was watching Demolition Man the other day. It had a funny scene where, like, you know, like they're having a fight, like, you know, Sylvester Stallone and Snipes. And then, like, Sylvester Stallone, he just picks up a TV and throws it on him. And he says, You're on TV. It's just like so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> stupid 90s quiff humor, but I love it, though. <laughs> Oh man, I miss one liners. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> but it's so good. So good. It's, it's fun. It's because it's like lighthearted humor juxtaposed with like actual violence or something. So, like. Yeah. Man, you know what would have been the hot movie though? Like, if you would have had Joel Silver from the 90s make a Punisher movie. Yo. You know bro. what I'm saying? Or produce a Punisher movie. All bro. right. You get Stallone to be the Punisher. I know Dolph Lundgren was the Punisher. Yeah. But if you had like a Stallone movie as the Punisher produced by Joe Silver, and then you can have like a host of people direct it. Like, you know, I think John McTiernan would probably not direct it because he's like, it was too <laughs> big back then. Yeah. But you could even get a guy like Russell Mulcahy to direct it. You could get, you know, he directed Ricochet for Joe Silver back in the day. You could even get um, Stephen Hopkins, who directed Predator 2, you yeah. feel me to do like a, a Joel Silver produced Punisher movie, bro? Man, a John Woo Punisher movie? Oh, Imagine my God. that, like old school, bro. John, like, yeah, old school John Woo, like, like you know, uh, all that you know, um, when, when he first landed um, on Hard Target and Down, yes, like, we, you know, right after he writes, he's like, not, not wind talkers, you know what I'm no. saying, like. Never even seen Wins. Not over. paycheck, John Woo. You know, talk about the, the face off type yes. of John Woo. Like, face off, John Woo. Hard, hard target, boiled. John Woo. <laughs> hard boiled, the killer. Like imagine Punisher doing like two gun stuff, pop, 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 like flipping and jumping. Imagine the crazy. Punisher in the scene of Hard Boiled where he swing through the 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 the, the garage, or, not the garage, the the warehouse. Yeah. So, the hot joint they should do is that they have Punisher movie. Of course, they already made so many Punisher movies and they didn't make banks, so they're going to stop. But yeah, you have John Bernthal, Punisher movie directed by Gareth Evans from The Raid. DN. DN. I'm mad you even mentioned it because now it's in my head. And now I can't get it out. Like, I would, I, I would, I would pre order the tickets right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's instant win. Yeah, view with you. Michael Chickas did a great job as the thing in the Tim story, Fantastic Four movies. You know, it's funny. A lot of people didn't like those movies. Like they bagged on them. But I tell you what, like they looked like they did in the comic. I mean, you know, <laughs> the effects weren't all there. But like, I mean, it was it was like an adaptation. They were look right. they are in the outfit. You know, Sue Storm was blonde. That was. You know, Johnny Storm, he was in rubber outfit as a thing. He was Mr. Fantastic. Right. They had Dr. Doom. I mean, people are going to be like, that wasn't a faithful adaptation. Wait till they see whatever they're going to do with it now. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I guess we got a clip, a glimpse of Mr. Fantastic in. uh... Oh, my goodness. What movie was it? It just like it literally. Oh, the Doctor Strange. The Doctor Strange. Like, I don't know who they're gonna cast as Johnny Storm. I don't know what they're gonna do with the thing. Like, I have no idea. Who knows, man? Who knows? Anyway, yeah. fun stream. Yeah, let me get up out. Of- I didn't even realize the time. But anyway, y'all. Uh, um, like I said, we're gonna be on Twitch for an hour. Uh, we're gonna do our showcase. 
And then we're going to pop back on here. We're going to do some fun experiments with comments and all of that. Um, so, yeah, uh, join us tomorrow when we uh, come through. Anyway, everybody else, thank you for coming in. Thank you for, you know, uh, thank you for joining, joining the stream. And we'll see you manana. Peace. Peace.